let us pray. Father, as we come in your presence now, we seek to reflect upon a portion of your holy word. We pray that you will open our understanding, that you will guide our thoughts. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. John chapter 9, verse 25. I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. I do not know whether he is a sinner. But one thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. When people see us living a renewed life in Jesus Christ, rather than simply rejoicing with us, they may often pose all sorts of questions as though to make us prove Jesus' essence. Jesus says these do in our lives what the Lord is doing in our lives in every respect matters more than us having all the facts about his essence and being able to explain who he is in detail. There is a very important story in John's Gospel, chapter 9, and it was read for us by the two pupils. It was about an adult man who was born blind and how Jesus enabled him to see. In this story, we see God at work extending his unconditional love to this man that Jesus met on the way and bringing him into the light, being able to see. The simple story is this. Jesus saw this man who was born blind. He spat on the ground, made mud with his saliva, spread his saliva on the man's eyes, sent him to wash in the pool. The man obeyed and returned being able to see. This sign that Jesus performed intended to evoke faith in the man as well as others around. But yet it caused many doubts about whether the man was previously blind. It offended the Pharisees for as far as they were concerned, Jesus was not of God because he did this particular work on the Sabbath. And there were a lot of back and forth questionings upon the man about the nature, the actions, and the character of Jesus. Thankfully, as we come near to the end of the story, there is a conversation between Jesus and the man, which led the man to faith, declaring that he believed in Jesus. And in effect, the man would have been saved. As we consider this text of John chapter 9, much can be said about various arising issues in the story. However, I want us this morning, I want to invite you to consider with me what Jesus has done in our lives in your life as well as mine, and to allow Jesus' ministering upon us to evoke and deepen our faith in Jesus, thereby motivating us to faithfully live in for him. It's important to note that when we, because we are able to recognize all that Jesus is doing in our lives, 
when we deepen our walk in the Lord and when we walk more faithfully with him, we will be of tremendous benefit to others who will want to taste and see about our Savior. Let me share with you then three things. One, Jesus says healing touch. For the whole of the childhood of this man and even part of his adult life, he lived in utter darkness because of being blind. The absolute beauty all around us, which we often take for granted, was not his to capture. The splendor of growth that we miss in our hustling and bustling was not his to measure. The emotional facial expressions of amazement or disappointment were not his to be moved by. Praise God that on one glorious day, all of that changed and the man was able to see like anyone else around him. We don't know the cause of the blindness, the, although Jesus did indicate that it was not any sin on, on the part of his mother or father, but it was an opportunity for God's glory to be revealed. What was important is that he was able to see again, he was able to see full stop because Jesus touched his life and healed him. It's important for us to recognize that, that Jesus touched the life of this man and brought him sight. Oh, what a fantastic day that must have been. And William Taylor Maxton would have penned, thinking about this situation. Lord, I was blind. I could not see in thy mild visions any grace. But now the beauty of thy face in radiant vision dawns on me. As we meet today, there may be much about Jesus that you and I don't know. Hallelujah, though, we can praise God for healing us. I believe there are persons here this morning who can get up and testify of what the Lord has done in their lives, how he has touched them, how he has brought them back even from situations of near death and renewed their lives. As for me, over 15 years ago, I earnestly prayed to God to touch my spine, which was damaged and causing me to have severe pain and numbness in my legs, even standing to sing a hymn. And sometimes before the hymn is finished, my feet would be so numbed and that it was stuck to the ground and I couldn't move because of what was happening with my spine. God healed me. And I can testify to that and you see me walking around, you see me standing for long periods of time without discomfort. And I can testify to the healing touch of the Lord Jesus upon my life. And this morning, I want to join with those who can similarly testify that indeed, Jesus is a mighty healer. And we must not limit ourselves as to what the Lord can do. We need to exercise our faith in the Lord. We need to release our faith even if we have to ask other persons to come alongside us and to pray with us and to encourage us in releasing faith. For there is nothing that our God cannot do. Interestingly, this healing as I examine it, I think of 
God working alongside those in the medical field. For Jesus could have just touched the man with his bare hand and the man would have received the sight. But instead, Jesus used the peculiar of saliva and mud, making a spittle and putting it on a man's eyes and telling him to go and wash. In fact, many of us who are parents know that maybe not as much today as we used to years ago, when you have a child and the child falls down and come complaining to you, if it has a little cut, you will put some saliva on it and you will tell it everything will be okay now and it will heal. Because saliva does have that healing practical about it. But I want to ask you today, even as we worship together, what is your testimony of healing? What has the Lord done for you, whether great or small, whether in past years or in current times? Secondly, Jesus says, timely provision. As you read the story of the blind man, it does not indicate that he requested Jesus to give him his sight. It doesn't. Being born blind, he would have known, he might, would not have known any other situation. And therefore, living without his sight would have been to him quite normal. The human body has a way of adjusting to those situations. And so what would have happened in his case is that the senses of smell and touch and taste would have become more dominant. This happens to us today too, in our various circumstances. There are people who are living in real bad conditions, and they simply accept even subhuman conditions and adjust their lives to live without that which they don't have. Praise God that the character of Jesus is such that he supplies our daily needs as well. Having this man now being able to see would have meant that he can do a lot of the normal things of life, including help himself, work for himself, earn his, earn his keep. Praise God then for Jesus. And the pages of the New Testament tells that Jesus went about doing good, including feeding the large crowd with our 5,000 with loaves and two fishes, and supplying the coin for the disciples to pay the tax. There are many persons who can testify that sometimes they get up on mornings and there's nothing to put before their household, but they pray to God, they trust themselves, and they leave home only to be told by someone, I have this for you. And then they realize that it is the very thing that they needed. A lady shared with me recently that she had a bill to pay and didn't know where the money would have come from. It was in fact the time when the light company will turn off the electricity because the bill wasn't paid. And she prayed to God and just went about her duties. And lo and behold, someone brought the exact amount of money and gave her as a gift so she can pay her bills. These are not coincidences. This is God at work, timely supplying our needs. And sometimes we don't even know how to ask him, but yet he supply the needs. And we need to keep trusting God. We need to keep believing in him. I am happy that in our church, as well as others, through the outreach ministry, we're able to meet all sorts of needs 
either short term, medium, or long term. We do that in the name of Jesus, for we are Jesus in the world. I can testify that as for me, when oh, 19 years ago, I prayed to God and trusted him to provide me a home despite my inadequate means. At every stage of construction, Jesus put people to be a profound assistance and allowed miraculous circumstances to occur in order that I would succeed. It would take me far too long to tell you that story that has resonated with me every day of my life. I ask you, therefore, to acknowledge the providing testimony of God and how God continues to provide for your needs regardless of what the circumstances may be. Thirdly, Jesus says, saving grace. While it is remarkable that Jesus gave the man sight and provided his need, the most amazing thing is the ministering to him in a manner that the man declared, I believe, Lord, and he worshiped. Jesus. Jesus came on earth as the sacrificial lamb for the redemption of humanity. And Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, she will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Other passages of scripture reminds us of the purpose of Jesus' coming. And today, you and I are here because as believers, we have taken God at his word, and in faith, we have given our lives to Jesus Christ. During Jesus' earthly ministry and ever since, multitudes, including those who are related to us, have accepted Jesus as Savior, and was saved. As for me, praise God that at 14 years old, I went to the altar and gave my life to Jesus. He saved me, and over the years, my faith has developed due to the changing circumstances of life. You may have been live, living deep in sinful deeds, and even being ostracized by others, including family members. You know your story. You know how Jesus would have convicted you of your sin, lovingly beckoning you unto him and turning your life around. Today, as we worship, there are so many of us who can join in singing that hymn when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. And we must not see that saving as simply a gateway to heaven, but we must also see that saving as a transformation of our lives here on earth helping us to live lives that are free and abundant and reconciling us to God in Jesus Christ. So perhaps you will want to share what is your saving testimony today. Jesus' nature, his character, and his actions may not be known by us in detail, yet he desires to minister to each one of us, young and old, at our point of need. And the Bible says that he will do for us even more than we can ask or even imagine. Beloved, wherever you are hearing me this morning, I want to beg you, I want to beseech you, 
accept Jesus Christ and commit your life to him as Lord and Savior. If you have already done so, I say to you, remain faithful in the Lord and let no one rob you of your joy in him. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ, I ask you right now, right where you are, to open your lives to him in faith. Ask Jesus to come into your heart, to wash away your sins, and to live in your life as you surrender to him. And so I want to ask us to pray, and then after that I want to provide just an opportunity for anyone who will want to share anything of what Jesus has done in their lives. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus and all that he has done for us. We thank you for Jesus touching our lives and restoring us to be the people that you want us to be, either bringing us into a situation of light out of a life of darkness or providing for our daily needs whatever those daily needs may be or saving our sin sick soul we thank you god that that salvation continues in our lives every day and that you continue to provide for us in every single respect bless us today O oh god as we bow in your presence Bless every home represented here. Bless every person opening their hearts to you now, Lord, and receiving Jesus Christ as Savior. May they be able to walk faithful in the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.